F of 14, I guess, is the big subject. And So uh, now that you've actually gotten physical... Now, <laughs> I hope I'm not teasing you too much. I am trying to hold it back because I know you've had a rough week. But I will say, now that you've had... Uh, I didn't uh, watch uh, your video. I, okay. Oh, you didn't? Okay. No. It was so I it don't was, know what the contents were. Oh, it, it was me going, you've lost your mind, and being, how could somebody who is uh, so averse to spoilers and yada yada uh, laugh themselves to near vomiting over the Harry Potter drive-by on, like, three separate occasions? Because that shit is funny! is the answer <laughs> but uh yeah no that's that's pretty much it it's mainly me la okay. it's mainly me laughing and being smug about how smart i am gotcha which is uh, why i felt talking? i needed to put it out there because i'm very smart you're a genius yes very super smart um but now that yoko taro and god uh strapped you into a clockwork orange uh, viewing machine and made you look what do you think of the way that game actually literally physically functions because you've described mmos in the past but you've always described it in the context of like you walking by your old roommate's fucking pc and he was wow fiending yeah because i mean he really did play it every single day oh he was fiending and so, it, like, whenever I had to talk to him about anything, it was while watching his Torin do runs in B Blood Song Gulch or something. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. He was extra crazy. He was a PvP player. Those people have something wrong with them. So, um... That's not MM that, but that's not like the beginning of my um, MMO experience, though. It, it just mm -hmm. that's where a lot of wow, hap like observing took place. Um, yeah, I talked about it during the stream uh, itself, but like the fact that enemies flinch, I think, is something that I find pretty good. I like it in um, a, a Black Desert. And I like it in in this when you're at least when you're fighting trash mobs, right? Yeah. Um, the, it's it's interesting because like it's they don't flinch much, but, but it 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 makes it a helps difference. to make it it may helps to make it look more than like you hitting a 3D model that has been placed there. Yeah, and uh, I saw someone say like. Um, the problem is, dude, don't think about everything as like an action or single player game. This is a different version of ATB, effectively. And, yeah. Hot and Bar Combat, like, particularly 14s, is kind of similar. Yeah. And it's just, it's 3D and there's movement involved, but it's still that sort of thing happening. And I, and I do understand that, but it doesn't change the fact that like these little things are just preferences I have and I'm going to miss them if mm -hmm. I notice that you're swinging at something that doesn't care you're swinging at it. It just, I don't mm. know. It's, it's a weird little thing, but it's there. There, um, there are on occasion the very rare situation where you'll have, to pot, you'll have to throw out an interrupt. And by have to, I mean you usually like, if, it's, if there's an interruptible coming out, you will have to interrupt it or the, the world will mm -hmm. be over. Um, and you'll see like a, a more pronounced flinch but it's still nothing compared to like a counter hit and even the most basic action game but it doesn't feel anywhere near as bad as a multiplayer game where neither of you are reacting to each other right <laughs> oh, think about how silly and dumb that is when you're just standing swinging and neither of you cares about the and you just and then one of you drops dead first and i'm like yeah i guess did you You'd never played Monster Hunter Before World, right? So Monster Hunter Before World had a really it was a a baby problem. Like didn't didn't matter. Wasn't a big deal, but it was visually horrifying and it was that the smaller animals were not synced between clients. So you would see me run forward and slash at nothing 
and then a deer 10 feet away would fall over and die. Oh, jeez. It looked really bad. It's probably the worst implementation of anything like that I have ever seen in my life. So 14 has that uh, going for it. And when something is big enough, you don't expect to see it flinch, really, you know? Um, they, the, anything that is like a, what do you call it? Anything that's like a, 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 a certain size or below will flinch, including some bosses. Mm -hmm. But the ones that you see in the near raid, because like uh, the, the, the 24 mans tend to have bosses that have to be physically gigantic because you need to have room for 24 people to smack on them. Right. So the ones that are like a, they're the semicircle of the target is coming halfway into the whole arena. Yeah, those ones aren't going to flinch. But anything that's like a movable, targetable thing does have a flinch effect. Uh, even even bigger ones like there's a berserker in one of the dungeons that's pretty big and he also flinches on hit um yeah i think um you know it, it, but like it, it, and not just like and like if you were to go outside of the the genre again like when you're fighting goliath in you know dmc5 you're not expecting big flinches until you do something that matters right like mm -hmm. the size kind of sells the the tanking of your hits and and such but um mm -hmm. but that, that that stuff aside um you had the uh yeah the way that an actual like large group of people has to play a game together was something that like i i just you know i didn't really i didn't know what i what to expect and then seeing how it came down to like almost rhythm game like pattern recognition and movement where it's like, again, a lot of guaranteed damage is coming your way. Um, whereas in other genres, you're trying to not ever get touched and beat it perfectly. Here, it's like, no, you have to mitigate what you're going to take and you're never going to avoid everything. You know? Yeah, there's basically your, your, your two types of damage for your, your every encounter is the shit that's coming out that you can avoid, which is everything that has an AoE marker, or in harder content, stuff that as a invisible AOE marker. Like, you know, it would be there in the normal version of the fight, but it's just not uh, mm -hmm. shown to me harder. Mm -hmm. And then there's stuff that, like, the boss is just going to cast something that hits every single fucking person in the raid with 30% of their life. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want your Scholar to shield it. You're going to want regen on. You're going to want mitigation from your tanks. Um, and, and you're going to want everybody there to know what, it, what each symbol means. So here's here's my favorite part because I because now that because I knew you were looking at a list Solidus gave you of symbols. Correct. And you don't need to know any of those for this discussion. What you did need to know was that I assume the list he gave you was enormous. It was a giant list of the different types, and at some of them it would say they look, it's it's here's a bunch of stuff that look like an eyeball. If you see something that looks like an eyeball, turn around. Yes, know? that's gaze, which would always throw Paige for a loop because I'd be raiding and I would just yell out, gaze, avoid the gaze. And she would pop her head up and go, what? It's like, no, honey, it's, it's dragon's gaze. Don't worry about it. Um, there's a lot of those indicators. There's, an, <sighs> there's a huge amount. And... One of the funniest things that ever happened in the history of that game was that in the 2.0 series, they are not standardized at all. Every single different boss had a different icon for, like, the same mechanic. So, like, this boss had this icon for stack, and this boss had this icon for stack, and it was a total fucking mess. And then they standardized them from Heaven's Word onwards... So this is Stack, this is Earthshakers, this is Pyretic, this is yada yada. And, like, you staring at that, you would be surprised at how much of the difficulty of any particular encounter is literally, do you know what Pyretic means at all? No. Like, I'm playing the game at all. Uh, sorry, I'm playing the game often. And we'll go into random parties, and uh, a flame effect flies across the whole screen. That's Pyretic. You'll see a flame effect like like a, a fire, uh, you know, animation go across the whole screen. 
and you will get a ticker that says pyretic in the upper right. And pyretic means don't move. If you uh, move, yes. you will take a huge tick of damage. Saw that on right? the list. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you get to 80, and you're doing, like, a dungeon boss, and the dungeon boss has pyretic. And this is a mechanic that has been around for six and a half years and has been consistent the whole time. And you had to see it to get here. Mm -hmm. And you see it go off and the person just instantly dies because they jumped or they moved. And you go, mm hmm. Mm. I, saw the I saw the favorite, description. Just the stack mm -hmm. marker. People get the stack marker and they just run away. And it's like, it's four arrows. Moving together. Inwards, into inwards. A spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stack up, stack up, stack up. I, I saw the um, pyretic uh, descriptor say that, like, yeah, don't move. Uh, casting animations count as not movement. Jumping is movement. And um, also, ice on the floor will sometimes be a thing too where you start moving all over the place or something like that and it's not instead of damage mm -hmm. you get thrown off the the arena or something like that yeah and then there's a, a second ice one which is you must move okay right um, and so like there's a, a recent ex trial that he'll be casting either pyretic or uh the the uh, the the demand movement blizzard i actually forget the name of it but and you'll have to you have to react to it on like you know, uh, you know, a few second timer. Yeah. So this, what amounts to a looking at the floor, rhythm and shmup forty player game or twenty four player game or eight player game mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I like the I like that you know again like everyone is is coordinating in that way and there's different things that you know you have to kind of yeah be aware of and that's that's the part of it that um, takes replaying and 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 you know mastery. Um, playing it for the first time uh going through it it was rather like oh you sh you don't get to look at anything because you have to stare at the floor so no i disagree that is per player you do have to look to the floor to a certain degree but you you also have plenty of time to look at at what's going on in fact, there's a bunch of encounters in which, like, uh, markers will appear on the sides, or you'll have to be watching, like, boss animations, in which you you must be looking. Okay. Like, w one of the more interesting things about the Rathalos fight that they brought in as a crossover was the Rathalos doesn't have any markers at all. Oh, wow. The Rathalos will do his tail swipe, and it's like, if he starts the tail swipe and you're in this vicinity, you'll get knocked over because it's a monster hunter boss but i uh i understand why min was looking at the floor so much though oh yeah no because that's where the information familiar. is being conveyed to you, you yeah know? I, I, there was um a friend of uh fields and kz that was talking about how they recently ran through um the, some of the earlier raids in the game the 24 mans at the beginning of the game are now like such a hilarious joke that you get in there and everyone's running it so quickly that you're like, I didn't get to do anything. I didn't get to see anything. Right. And part of that is that because you are incentivized to look at the floor, despite the fact that there's a visual, uh, you know, there's, there's stuff happening around. That's kind of okay because you're going to be running these multiple times. It is extraordinarily uncommon for somebody to run like the the near raids that you saw once and then be done with it mm -hmm. at the very least you're probably going to want to run it five times in order to get the head the arms the chest the legs and the feet every for your character right, for a right. look or you could run it um 17 times if you want to get the upgrade material that uh, lets you skip some of the savage fights to upgrade your gear, but and, and you're, you're going to be looking at these twenty times each. No, and no in, problem. In Nier's case, you also get to walk back through it, right, and mm -hmm. and, and take in at least the environment part of it. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely you know not that bad, but uh, there were certainly were times where it was like, like wait, what was that attack? And it was like ah, uh, who knows, but. We avoided it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's an interesting dilemma because it's the situation 
where the worse you are at it, the more you'll get to appreciate all the animations. Okay. Because sure. you'll fail. Because you're not <laughs> right, right. And so each of those five times you're going through it, you're getting you're getting these parts of these characters who like are just walking mannequins in a mall showing off what you can wear that are not yeah, actually like characters. I've I've uh I, I'm sick of Emerald Weapons animations. Hey. <laughs> you you my spot. Hey. You my spot. Come on, go. Thank you. All right, so uh, we've taken care of that issue. Um, and oh, is he okay? All right, I was. I'm just have a conversation with dog ass. See if we can get anything going. What's the difference? What's the difference? You got there first. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I got you. I got me. Pop farts and chewy in the morning. You know what's one of the the more interesting things you're describing, like the rhythm game and the placement aspect of it. Yeah, well, a rhythm. I mean, not really rhythm, I suppose, but just yeah, like like there's there's bullet dodging and. Just pattern, movement, recognition, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, you know? I'm sure there's a better genre for that. Then there's like, hey man, you know that giant magical protective bubble that everyone's standing in? Mm -hmm. S stand in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> St stand in it or you will die. Honestly, if I had to, like, ironically enough, like, I know the, the, the trend of uh, fighting game analogies is, is like hit a peak absurdity. But uh, did uh, Min ever talk to you about the rotation? Yes. So um, hitting, doing your rotation is mandatory. It's how you fight effectively. It's how you stay in and do the correct amount of damage by doing all of your spells in a particular order. As one cools down, you allow the next one to go. And then by the time you're through the last one, the next one, the first one comes back up. And that's how you yeah. stay consistent on your damage. And um, it's unnecessary fighting against randoms and random trash things in the world, but mm -hmm. against the boss, you want to stay in and do it as long as possible until the last moment where you have to do your defensive maneuver. Is what I understand. Yeah, the the, the difference is is like night and day. It's like ninety four percent. Like if if you were to run it, like because you can you can just like sit there and watch, and you're like, mm -hmm. why is this so slow? Mm -hmm. And then you like you can look at like somebody's cast bar and you're like, this motherfucker is just casting jolt over and over. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a difference between like like five percent and one hundred percent. Right. And and I um I mean that idea of just like, you know, um properly clicking on things to maximize your your time. Any any RTS or game with a a you know you click on a thing and it's got a cooldown training unit ready training unit ready you know mm -hmm. like you you find ways to optimize that you click on one base while that's building you go to the other and so yeah the idea is 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 one that makes sense i guess you have to have um it seems like everyone has a ton of abilities and you will always i guess want to be working with enough so that you will come back to your first one by the time you finish your last one it depends. I mean, it depends on how fast. Everybody has a different rotation. It's one of the more interesting things. Like as somebody who's played every cap to class, sorry, every class to cap, like they all function very differently. Like you have something like dancer, which does not have a rotation. Um, dancer is all procs. You you do ability one, and it will always proc ability two, but there's only a fifty percent chance it'll proc ability three, and ability two will have a 50 percent chance to proc ability four but two and four are where all the good damage comes from and two and four have a 50 percent chance each of procking ability five which is the fan and what if what if any of these fail then you do it again 
and do it again. And over a length of time, it will even itself out. And there is one of your cooldown buttons on 60 seconds, or maybe it's 120, I don't play Dancer that often, is proc everything on the bar. But no one blames you if it fails. No. Because uh, it's built so into that, the like, character that there's a there chance are, There you are can... like four or five classes that all work off procs. Like Bard, Old Machinist, Dancer, uh certain black mage stuff like you're you're you have to keep your eye on a swivel to see the the proc go off whether or not and then you also have a oh, red mage of course is all procs but then you have uh, stuff like my character i play a dark knight nothing ever changes ever hmm. like my 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 rotation is a straight line and it is don't deviate from it ever how many things usually how many things before you uh, loop you back mean? around? How many? Uh, oh, it's on a 120 second loop because no, I mean, how, how many steps to the rotation? Oh, uh, I, you know, what's really weird. I can't tell you unless I'm holding a controller. <laughs> really? Okay. I literally can't tell you. Uh, it's power slash, then dark slash, then siphon strike, then salted earth, then blood letter, then. Well, you have to start with blood weapon, so then you'll have mm -hmm. your 50 after blood letter, and then you do uh, living shadow. And then you have to do delirium, and you have to do it living shadow, and then delirium because delirium lasts for ten seconds. And if you hit it too early, then your cooldown won't rotate around for the fifth one. It's a it's a whole fucking thing. So over five or six things. Oh, way more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Way, way way more. Um, um, the like they they range in complexity from dancer, which is almost nothing, to the summoner rotation, which. I will, you know what, I'll just grab a photo of it. Because uh, you can visualize these rotations. Um, well, I'm thinking of the 12 shortcut buttons Min had on display uh, for all the things he was going to cast. Yeah. And... So the, the way that Min has it is, like, there's two different ways to do it. You have the, the, the 16 buttons right which is d-pad and then four buttons and then light left trigger right trigger and then you have uh he was using right bumper to switch to a second one mm -hmm. right what you can also do is have it so that if you hold left trigger you get the left ones if you hold right trigger you get the right ones mm -hmm. however if you hold left trigger then right trigger you get the left ones on the second one and if you hold right trigger then left trigger you get the right one, so you get the, the ones on the second one on the right. And if you double tap left, you get the third set on the left. And if you double tap right, you get the third set on the right. You have up to six sets? I, I use six sets of eight. Wow. Okay. Now, the, the ones on the double taps are shit like mounts rare items limit break stuff that you will never ever ever have to put into your rotation but uh there's a reason why i put out a a, a tutorial guide a long time ago hmm. that was how to play this game on a controller and he used a couple classes as as a uh, as examples and the thing that i was basically talking about movement you're moving all the time right mm -hmm. and the last thing that you want to do is have to be moving and then hit the d-pad on one of your skills mm -hmm. so you want to hit you want to put your buttons that would actually be buttons for movement so you look at your rotation learn the rotation then build your control layout around the realities of actually needing that okay i suppose it's not that crazy if you just think about all of those actions as um switch to uh switch to beowulf and press down up you know attack or it's ironically switch to, enough switch to style the, and do input despite the uh 
the control it's a move shenanigans. List. Like I'm, I'm gonna send you a photo of the summoner rotation, which you may be confused because it's a big circle. Okay, so I'm looking at a picture here, and Dreadworm trance into Bahamut phase, into yeah. filler phase one, run three priority, run four optimization, uh, firebird trance phase, and then filler phase two, run three priority, run f ruin four optimization. Oh, that's actually, yeah, no, I get it. Um, right. That's, that's like so, a Marvel so combo. That's in that yeah you want to be like you want to be doing this and then mm -hmm. when that's over you want to switch into this mm -hmm. and with summoner it's the the you have to build up the next phase with procs mm -hmm. to get the next one so you can't just go into phoenix you have to you have to set up phoenix with the bahamut mm -hmm. thing and all that shit mm -hmm. so now that's me, like like, like the dumb theory. dumb wooly fucking fighting game conversion aside it literally no, this actually is, works really well it actually is like that though yeah that's the thing right and then there's right. a filler point, and then there's, okay, take your wall bounce. All right, right. begin filler phase two. Exactly, exactly. Yes, totally. I get it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where it gets a little more complicated, because the second thing I'm sending you is what's called your opener. So your opener is your idealized rotation. It is what you're going to be doing in the first 60 to 120 seconds of the fight. Cast two and things is, as a pre-pull. It is to the millisecond. It is, you're doing this, 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 and then the ones on the bottom are hit this, and then in between the next two, hit this, this, and double weave it. And then this it. will cool down by that point in time. And, and at the you... bottom of that, you see all those lines? Yeah. What that is, is the timeline of every other class's buffs. So you notice there's a there's a point where the the every single buff lines up, and they're all overlapping. Mm -hmm. You over on the top of that in that rotation is where all of the strongest hits from the summoner's rotation are, because it's guaranteed to be simultaneous to trick attack to battle litany, and so all of these things have multiplicative effects. So this exact pattern with these classes is optimal damage, essentially. Yeah, so then you yeah, get okay. really bizarre optimization shit where people go, listen, we don't want ninjas. Uh, sorry, we don't want red mages. We need a ninja because we need trick attack. Because trick attack every 60 seconds is a 5% damage buff, and it lines up with everybody else's rotation. So, like... For the longest time, it was this weird thing where Trick Attack was a 10% damage buff to everybody. It was like a, it was actually a damage up on the boss, so you didn't have to apply it to anybody else. And it was every 60 seconds. So every rotation in the game gets created alongside, well, you want the big hits to be within the 50 to 70 second window because you want them to all line up with Trick, which makes ninjas totally invaluable. So and they finally nerfed it a couple months ago. So classes that are primarily support are going to be buffing on a rotation, and uh, healers, I guess, are just focusing on whoever's low and when everyone's up, doing other support things. Yeah. And so because the, I mean, it it, it converts it, it like it makes the most sense when you're talking about someone who's doing damage, because it's like here's mm -hmm. a bunch of things you click on to do damage in a, in a sequence. But when you get right. into things that are less direct in that way, it starts to become a little bit, uh, I guess, less obvious. So here's where it gets gets weird, and here's where like there's the philosophy of it or whatever. Um, the the best defense is a good offense is something that applies pretty significantly to MMOs. And it applies to fighters as well. If you create a touch of death combo, you don't need to worry about your fundamentals as much because if you touch them, they're dead, mm -hmm. right? The longer, like there are phases of bosses that don't exist if you get to do enough damage, right? Yeah, so, Skull God had to slow down to, sh to, let, uh, to let some extra phases show. Right. So you've got tank tank should be doing as much damage as, as possible the only difference is they're going to be pointing the boss where it needs to be and mitigating so that they don't die instantly when tank busters come in dps 
they get to just go crazy as hard as they can, mm -hmm. but also they'll be managing all side mechanics. All like, you have to drop the puddle over here or else everyone's going to die. You need to both of you run to the sides and touch this and then touch each other or what have you. But you mentioned that the, there are DPS that do have buff abilities. They should be using those buff abilities for their own rotation and for the party rotation, which means follow the rotation down to the second. Like, it's super exact, right? If you want to be perfectly optimal. And then healers is the most interesting because there's a huge argument. And this is the number one time that you don't pay my sub comes through. Healers have 85, 90% of their buttons do heals. And maybe three or four of their buttons do damage. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, I play healer. I shouldn't have to do damage, right? You don't have to. But if you're a good healer, you're actually going to be just standing there doing actually nothing. Mm -hmm. for like 60% or more of the fight. Yeah. Shout outs to Mothman's Mercy back in the Overwatch days. Uh, he'd pull the gun out and start shooting. Get in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, both healers combined add up to another DPS in terms of damage. If they're, if they're hitting their buttons. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's way faster. And the meta for healers then becomes about overhealing it becomes every point of health that you heal somebody over their maximum is wasted okay yeah so you actually want as you increase in skill you want health bars to sit lower and lower and lower so that you get because if they are alive who cares what health they are and you can get them back up as long as they don't fuck up uh, in the next X seconds. Yes. So yeah, okay. when you're running a 24 man, you tend to keep everybody topped up to maximum because you don't know or trust any of these people. And if they die, it takes a shit ton of your MP, a lot of time, and it puts a damage debuff on them. Now, what happens more often? Someone fucking up standing where in the wrong place or someone only being able to get three parts per... Three... Um, abilities off instead of four in each phrase of the of the so rotation for, for optimal play you always want to get that last one for 99.9 .9 of all play including everything that i've ever done get out of the fucking circle like the 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 one hit of damage that you're gonna do for i don't know eleven thousand damage is nothing compared to the 10% debuff you're going to get for the next two minutes if somebody has to pick you up off the floor. Okay. Like, the, 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 the risk-reward ratio is enormous. Like, you'll have people that are, you know, they, they, they have rotations that build up to, like, a gigantic hit. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, like, let's take... Uh, uh, I play Samurai a little bit, and Samurai has a button that does, like stupid numbers like right now on a, on a crit it'll do like 122,000 or some shit like that it's fucking ridiculous and so like you have your your you see your cooldown going your 2.5 second global cooldown and you're like dude if i can wait just like half a second more i could totally hit it uh it's almost never worth it because you're almost always going to eat it okay you're almost always going to just die yeah i i mean so you know shout outs to dreyfus frost for explaining to me uh, a lot of the the rotation um, stuff because it was basically to he's like because basically uh, Solidus went hey just so that your I eyes used to don't raid with that guy yeah so so just just so Solidus was like just so your eyes don't glaze over here's what the patterns and arrows and symbols mean and then uh, Dreyfus was like and and here's what Min is doing at the same time so these two yeah. things combined you understand what's happening in this room. You know, when the, to with a the degree, flashing lights. right? Because yeah. there's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, though, um, I guess you discuss and have a plan in advance for like who gets to use the uh, LB three. Well, to use the uh, terminology. I mean, there, there's 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 a certain philosophy to that, uh, and it's and it's a it's really simple. 
It's are you fighting Alexander or WOL or any of these bosses that have a move that will just kill the party if you don't use the tank LB? Use it. Right? Alexander builds uh, the Alexander fight. There's a giant sequence where the giant robot just builds up, builds up, builds up for 15 seconds and literally counts down the second until they hit you. And if you do anything other than use the LB for the tanks, you'll all just die. So it doesn't matter. Like, it's 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 required. Okay. Every other situation is, do you want to do more damage, or do you want to save it just in case there's a disastrous wipe and the healer can pick up everybody off the floor? Mm, but if you are all doing your job properly, you can get it done faster by... Right casting and it because otherwise you're then you sitting go, oh, on we know <laughs> then you go no we know what we're doing and then you use the the dragoon lb3 and then uh you get locked in place and the dragoon dies and then the person who's tried the summoner who tries to pick them off the floor doesn't move because raise takes 10 seconds and then they die and then the red mage tries to pick up the summoner and then they die and then all of a sudden uh-oh it's just cascading down. But the uh-ohs are coming in later in the fight most of the time, yeah. right? So you can use it immediately and at least let it build back up over the course of the fight. You'll never get a second LB3. Oh. Okay. And the healer one is the most valuable because the healer one is everybody's off the floor to full health like nothing ever happened in one second. Heroes never die. Yeah, yeah basically. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, like, and this is where you get into um, prog versus farm, which is a fascinating class balance issue. So, like, red mage doesn't do the most damage. It doesn't. It, it does a little bit less damage than most of the other DPS. But it can raise people off the floor instantly. It can, it can, it has a mechanic where it casts one spell with a normal cast time, and then the second one's instant. So you do something cast like cure, that's just one second, and then you do raise, mm -hmm. and it can raise people instantly. So red mages aren't the best for when you're hardcore, super the best, and you want everyone's to clear this good. You don't need to rest, yeah, on Sunday. Right. But when you're going into a new fight, they're mm -hmm. fucking invaluable mm -hmm. because they let you recover from mistakes like that. And every class lives somewhere on that, that diagram, right? People love to bring in white mages because white mages make mistakes go away. Mm -hmm. the Scholars, less mistakes however, you make. keep mistakes from happening. Right, right, right. And, and then I get... your comfort with what role that is is I... going to be dependent on class and desire and personality. And you can do, I assume, the equivalent of like a dive comp or something like that where you go minimal healing maximum oh absolutely DPS there are totally groups like that. that would go into encounters uh fucking one tank six dps one healer okay instead of two tanks and two healers and four dps and some fights that totally works because you're doing so much damage that the dangerous phase doesn't happen mm-hmm now that's not common, because if the if there are bosses that like, there are bosses you can skip the phase, and then there are bosses that when you hit a certain HP threshold, they're like, no, we're doing this mechanic, no matter how fucking fast your your bullshit is or not. Or I guess, um, your so or your solo healer, I guess, is like a maestro and doesn't even really need a second one because they're on top of it. Oh yeah, solo like people who can solo heal excellently while also doing damage are the absolute best players, a hundred percent. Because the the healing has such a bizarre meta to it. Like I said earlier, which was uh, there's a binary state between living and dead, right? And I saw somebody in the chat uh, put it even more succinctly, which was the only HP that matters is the last one. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but after that, there's MP. Because say you have a white mage. White mages have all these buttons that don't use any MP. And aren't on the global cooldown, so they can just use them whenever, right? All of their damage abilities are on the global cooldown. So then it becomes, how long can you keep everyone in here alive without using a single wasted damage slot or a single MP? 
Because every time you heal somebody with Cure 2, that's a glare you weren't casting to damage the boss. Okay. Um, now, the other thing, too, is I noticed that, like, uh, tanks would be direct targeted for periods of fights. Right? Oh, yeah. And uh, that is, um, I guess, random? Depe no. In the sense that, like, uh, if it'll pick between one of two people that have this job or, or, or whatever and, and focus on them for a period of time. So there's two versions of that. One is, uh, so in the, in the third near raid, there's a part where all three tanks get circled by a red circle. And uh, it means uh, Tank Buster is going to hit all three of them. I remember and, that with the little uh, thing above yeah. their heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on those, it's every tank is going to get hit by it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if only one tank is the one that gets hit by it, it will be the one that it has the highest aggro. So it'll be whoever's main tanking it. Um, there are, however, other mechanics like H highest say, aggro. Uh, yeah, it's called enmity in game. Basically, tanks put on a stance that multiplies the damage the boss thinks they're being done to them, so that they target them exclusively. Okay. The whole Let's... the whole point of tanking is you put on grit or uh, deliverance or shield oath or whatever, and that designates you as the primary target as soon as you hit the boss because it multiplies the enmity damage off your skills by like a hundred. It says to the it says to the in-game system, oh man, this paladin's actually doing a million damage. Focus on him. And that allows you to drag the boss to wherever you want it to go. Yeah, but like I guess I'm just wondering why that because to me that seems like I get that seems binary where it's like Seems like a total given, right? One or the other. Why would it ever look away then? So, this is a bizarreness that happened. Uh, basically, you have the reason why is because you go into fights with two tanks. And if it was the tank itself caused the extra aggro, then how do you decide which of these two is the main? Right? You need a toggle on one of them that determines hey, man, no, this is the one that's going to be main. This is going to be the one that's off. Okay. And in addition to that, you have the provoke ability which is for switching. So there's a huge amount of almost every encounter in the game has a tank buster, which is a super high damaging single target attack that leaves a debuff on the tank that if they don't, if they don't get the tanks, sorry, if they don't get the boss's attention off them, the auto attacks will just kill them immediately afterwards. Okay. So for example, I'm fighting diamond weapon. It builds up its tank buster. My buddy Darius provokes he hits me with the tank buster, and then because of the provoke, the diamond just instantly turns on a dime towards Darius, and now Darius is the and tank he switches for over. the yeah. next two minutes. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, uh, I, I, de I, de uh, I developed uh, uh, an under uh, somewhat of an understanding and a respect for like that that level of you know um, coordination in the group uh, uh, with each of those those fights. It was pretty cool to see. Um, and, uh, I mean, outside of that aspect, because afterwards, uh, uh, the, the group got together and was like, hey, let's show off, uh, Knights of the Round. Before that, I just want to finish one thing mm -hmm. with an ironically enough fight in game analogy, the one that I was building up to, which was the best way that I could describe the rotation and general gameplay is that you are in training mode, running infinite on a dummy mm -hmm. while somebody in your vicinity is literally throwing objects at you mm -hmm. for you to dodge. Like somebody is throwing bananas at you or fucking cans. Right. <laughs> keep, keep up, keep up the, keep the rhythm up. Keep it up. Don't drop it. Yeah. Don't drop it. Okay. Now you have to get away. Okay. Get back. And in if there. you get hit in the head with a can, mm -hmm. you're not going to keep your fucking infinite up. Are you? Are there? I'm trying to think if there's any Souls bosses where, like, I guess, well, Phalanx is the closest thing, but not really. We're like, no, all the they're, ads... they're purely reactive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
Well, like the, it's the difference between an active boss and um, like a boss in Final Fantasy is a is a, is a fucking timed spreadsheet. If you really break it down, mm-hmm. like you can you can determine to the second every single thing that they're going. Well, to all do. raid bosses are that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who invented the raid? Who invented the raid? Yes, the large I MMO say, raid. I want to say EverQuest. Um, but it's interesting to mention because raids across different games share literally no similarity at all, even on a like mechanical or thematic or genre level. Like raids in World of Warcraft in terms of like movement complexity are like a baby's toy compared to 14. But what they have is a much, 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 much stronger gear check and uh, pre-fight buff check. It's much more preparatory and less performative. And less reactive, yeah. Okay, okay. So, Eh. like, you'll get a situation where my buddies are playing classic and they're complaining because the fucking raid leader is going, well, we got to spend the two hours running around the world getting world buffs so we can fucking clear Onyxia in a fucking record time, and it's a miserable fucking experience. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I, I, it's, it's, it's interesting to get a, 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 a grasp of that, even from just like a, a fucking super distant perspective. Um, mm-hmm. But it was cool. It was cool. It was probably the coolest part of, you know, uh, uh, that entire thing um the part where you're running around in the world and everyone's just fucking (laughs) riding their three-headed cerberus and spinning in circles and blocking the door by the way Wooly, i i have to mention you've mentioned him before the guy on the three-headed cerberus is the guy who just bought me a butterfinger from the states yeah okay (laughs) All right, good. We were good on. we were sitting in Discord, like laughing our asses off, trying to get our giant mounts to block the door as big as we could. It's I like, but it's not just the door. It's the literal NPC quest giver standing next to the door. You can't see him because everyone's big mounts are just clipping through each other, and it's just like, what the what the fuck is this, man? <laughs> so. <laughs> like, Two oh. things, actually. Well, three <laughs> things. One is you're streaming. You're streaming in a digital space that people can literally inhabit. Yeah. So they're going to go do it. The second thing is there have been a couple MMOs that have had collision and you don't want to play one. Oh. Having having God. player collision. Oh, God. Because cre- like, you're thinking, like, this is annoying how people can overlap on top of characters. Like, your can't visuals, click on them. yeah. What if they just physically block you? Push your you path? out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pool's closed, exactly. Um, that's that's uh, fucking have a hotel, hotel shit. Mm-hmm. And the third one is uh, that is actually a fairly. Because uh, you played the, the third ray, or you watched the third ray be played a couple weeks after its, if it's heyday, uh, after its de- launch day. The Tuesday of the release of a piece of content is there are so many people here that when you turn the camera, people on the left side of the screen despawn so the people on the right side of the screen can load in. Jesus Christ. And you get this part where you're having the most climactic thing that could ever happen, and it's this tragic moment with your buddy Alphano, and you're, like, hurt, and you're sad, and you're like, Alphano, where are you? I can't. There's a guy named Ahigao Mindbreak just put on top of you, and he I can't click. I keep clicking on his profile. Alf, God damn it! I mean, at least they disappear during the cutscenes, but yeah, yeah um, it's just it's that moment I had in uh, Automata where you know um, the where uh, uh, I'm at the climax of one of the most emotional <laughs> moments. And Emil's stupid car is driving around in the background, blasting oh, his song and ruining everything. Oh, man, that's perfect. 
You know, That's when you're like, great. I just got bad luck. Bad luck, bad RNG today, you know? Um, fucking hell, man. It, 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 it's, it's that times a million. It's extra weird, and it's this isn't to go back to the old one to make fun of you, but MMOs and spoilers and spoiler, like, realities is probably the most complicated thing of any genre of game because the game is not in real time, right? Mm -hmm. But for a functional perspective, things, like, literally occurred. Right? So there's been an ongoing war inside that game. That war's been ongoing for two real life years. And people are walking around with gear from it, and mounts from it, and titles from it. So the idea of like, shut up about, uh, you know, Gimlet Dark is absurd because you, you can't. Like, it's there. Right? So it tends to be like, whatever the current patch is, everybody shuts up, but as soon as the, the patch recedes into the background, like 5.4 is now, like, open mm -hmm. to a degree, because it happened. Mm -hmm. Like, you still shouldn't go out of your way to be like, hey, did you hear about what happened to Astinian? But yada, you're gonna yada. see people walking around with some shit. Yeah. And every now and then, the game itself decides to fuck you. There was a title that you got for clearing the final dungeon in Heaven's Word. And the name of the title in English only was Blank's Final Witness. And okay. you logged in and it was the first thing you saw when you logged in is people running around with that. And it was just this, like, you guys are stupid, stupid idiots. Wow. Wow. There's another situation where the patch trailer decided to hide who the new boss was going to be. So everyone was interested. And then uh, a buddy of mine started crafting and went, oh, cool. There's new crafting recipes. And in the new crafting recipe, it's the ornament that includes the item that comes from boss name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or, uh, God, uh, I think I was somebody else was playing, and they went to go play Triple Triad, and the Triple Triad cards spoiled. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fights. Yeah, that's... And it's, it's what are you going like, to do about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Triple Triad it's, cards. It's why there's such a weird, uh, 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 like, push for when people start to, like, catch up as fast as they can. Because or once you're the caught consequences. up, there's, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're safe until the next one. It's it's a weird everything about MM it's why I end up talking at length about them because everything about the culture of it is fascinating because it's not real. So you could design a game where a lot of that is um perhaps you could create a game where you can turn on and off as much of that as you want, I imagine, by using instances to control the mm -hmm. you know what i mean like how much multiplayer versus how much single player or at the very least like pseudo single player you're gonna you're getting um i you know if you had to walk into a big old plot castle where nothing but important conversations would happen and then walk back mm -hmm. out i would have no problem walking into an instance that was private to me of that castle doing all my conversing and then walking back out into the real world that is most of that game. That solution is what they do 90% of the time. Okay. In fact, what you end up doing a lot of the time is you'll go... To so, uh, in the near raid itself, you would talk to people outside in the village where everyone was yucking it up. But then once you went into that one room, it was always empty. The only mm -hmm. people in there were 2B and Konog and Anog. Mm -hmm. And that structure is how most of them go. There's a there's a centralized location called the Rising Stones where, like, I want to say, like, the start and end of almost every patch for the past two years has taken place. Where you walk in and it's a fully public area and then you cross the threshold and then it's a fully public area for in-game characters mm -hmm. such as Hori Boulder and Alpha Noah and Alize, etc., uh, it's it's weird seeing how they have to scale up uh, 
things like doors and stairs for giant groups of people when you're walking back through the near areas alone. Um, oh, dude, uh, the the they they had some fun with that this expansion. So the by the way, uh, 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 Min plays a lot of fell, and that's terrible. The smallest um, possible experience. That's just, just awful. I have friends that play Lalafell, and that's also terrible. And uh, they should stop. It's it's one of the most popular races in the game, but um, um, go die potatoes. All right. Uh, moving on from that, uh, they did have some fun with that in that you cannot enter any of the dwarf homes unless you are actually that small. Ah, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. In the end, uh, we did a little character creator tryout just so I can put the put the, put it's the, not great. the system on trial. And it's it's old. It does it's what it's supposed to, old. but it's pretty antiquated. Uh, in the end, I, I made a buff girl. Yeah, of course. You made surprise, a female surprise. Rogadin. I could have told anybody you would have gone for a female Hellsguard Rogadin. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's the same character I play. Well, I play but, a guy, but still. But it was also like, it was like, th that was, but it, it's what, it's the most obvious, but like, it's also the most obvious because like, what other, like, uh, like, you know, close, but not quite things like that are there? Not many, right? I, I felt as if you, you saw some of those races where it was like, um, what was the one where it was like giant beast thing and then tiny little bikini, you know? And you're like, all right, well, that's fine, I, I guess. If you just want to go hard on the coward train, don't allow it to mm -hmm. customize to the fullest, ex fullest extent. But it was so like Monster Hunter armor vibes. And I was like, you fucking... You know, That's, but it's but it's old. It's very old at that, this point. The, so the, the I saw you guys messing around. I think it was the dragoon armor that you're talking about. The dragoon armor has like a, a, a like a visible belly on the female armor. Um, that's actually very uncommon with the gear in 14. Uh, as far as MMOs go, like the gear is actually notably much less sexually dimorphous than you would expect. Okay, and they have recently removed a shit ton of restrictions on uh, gendered armor. Okay. So, like, dudes can wear the 2B outfit. Looks cool. okay. terrible. Sure. And does not give them the extra legs. It doesn't give the extra ass. No? No, it does not. But they can't. Cowards. No, Still. the real cowardice is they put bunny girls in the game, but they won't put bunny boys. Sure. Uh, it's still the, the, yeah, the, uh, letting the armor look the same across the, the, the gamut is, is, that's much better, because, I mean, damn, Monster Hunter doesn't even pretend to give a fuck. Monster Hunter is, is, like, the, the, the most the extreme. That it's the most it's, extreme it's like, I've ever seen. Like, you get situations where one armor is fantastic on one and just a, a dog shit pile on the other yeah and, and again I, I say like it doesn't always have to be like i'm i'm not i'm not always fighting for my case here of like oh i want to to have big armor on on a girl like the kieran armor i think is wonderful i think it's really cool style i actually really you know think it, 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 it it's it works it's just you don't get a choice choice is good don't not give choice. Yeah, I think the male Kieran armor is horrible. For example, the male Kieran armor that has the, like the unicorn head that covers mm. most of the face, it looks awful. I don't. I don't even remember what it looks like. <laughs> I just. I it, will. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Here, I'm sure I'm no. sending you a screenshot, and you're gonna go. Oh, that is bad. Here's a screenshot of both yeah, armors. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. It's exactly. Bad, right? Like, yeah. So you know. That's that's a hundred percent it. Like, just allow the choice. Um. Anyway, but yeah. Uh. Uh. Not to you know go on forever, but like all in all, um, that lore thread was fucking incredible. That was the fourth raid. <laughs> was the raid on your brain from that one Twitter thread that uh, we we reviewed? Yeah, you understand what I meant before. Uh, that it like it feels like there's more to do with near here than automata. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of it's like 
the fact that there are seeds at all. Yeah, it's tarotverse. Like, it's what? not it's not just like like you know, two B on the cover is or two P on the cover is your you know, this is your product, this is your crossover, that's your star, and this is who you recognize. But like mm -hmm. this is absolutely That's your, that's your bait. Mm-hmm. But this is ab you. absolutely uh, referencing and homaging like the entire career of games this guy's put out. So, um, and 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 not only that, but like potentially in an incredibly significant way, um, given uh, I guess the implications of like that last coin. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Um, yeah, it, and the next wow. and. Uh, I will echo what some people have said is that, like, personally, I love this crossover shit and I love d digging super deep. And I can't wait for the next game that has nothing to do with any of this shit at all and will mm -hmm. have, like, a, a single book in the background of mm -hmm. one library that talks about robots. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, ha ha! Yeah. And I can't wait to be obsessed with those connections as. The the, the uh, you know as the thing happening in like in front of me is there and it's it's standing on its own two legs and God bless it I I always I'm a fan of it having its you know its own thing but like I just can't help but like be like oh shit but the the, the tie into this or that or whatever you, you know, know you know um, who you are Wooly you're holding a thing that you like and another thing that you like and people are like don't you enjoy these things and you're like yeah. But what if they kissed? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if what if they were kissing? Mm -hmm. Remember when is the lowest form of conversation, says Tony Soprano. And, you know, man's got a point. But if I'm playing a game that's really good and then they make reference to a chord in it and I'm like, I liked a chord the first time I saw her. What what do you have to say about this thing that I liked? Hey, let, let me you ask know? you a question. You say, remember when is the lowest form of conversation, but is what if this happened not actually the lower form of conversation? Not what if... The, it, yeah, it is. It is, for sure. But that's not what I'm thinking as much as I'm wondering what happened between now and then. That's, that's what it is for me, right? Yeah. Is because, and I've said this before many times, Character plus time is my fucking like I'm obsessed with that. I love it so much. Yeah. Right. Because it's the opposite of um, your favorite Saturday morning cartoon show where no one ever grows or changes. Yeah. Like one of the most exciting parts of any game to me is like a time skip. Yes. Right. And it allows your brain to dance with the possibilities of what became of each person. And it's you heard me talk about how fucking incredible it was watching Avatar as during the show they grow and then off camera they grow uh, and you get to see you know both of those things it's it's wonder it's 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 great people grow things change um tv and 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 stories that have been so focused on keeping them the same have been all i've been exposed to as a kid and it was such a refreshing change of pace when I, I, I eventually came across stories where they had the balls to change things, you know? Um, and not just for the purposes of, like, selling a new form of a toy, but, like, to show that the character is going to behave differently in a situation now than they would have at the beginning of the show, or even the middle. Yeah, there's a wild difference between, dude, Megatron got hit by a thing, now he's a new toy, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Brother Nier is now an adult. Right? So... Big difference. Th so that small little thing, and the fact that, like, I just saw so few stories d changing characters over time became something that I focused on over time. And, like, now, when it's like, oh, the prospect of someone you saw in a game, in a moment, in a story, in a movie, and then something else that's tangentially related, but possibly finding out what happened f after the, we, we stopped following them is so interesting. I just, I'm like, yeah, what, what did come of that person? 
you know did what did they do with the rest of their life what was it it's like it's it's just fucking can't brain candy to me you know so every time uh these separate stories even hint at these little connections i really start to zoom in on those points um and you know i can see how people can would be like dude you're you're getting too obsessed with those those you know you're pulling no, up the shut microscope up. You, know what you shouldn't ruled? be you know what but fucking ruled that's the reason why Junpei's you know? teaching a baseball team Yukari's the Super Sentai actress? A Featherman actress, no less. Like, you know, like, yeah.